Minehead in southwest England plays host to the fourth round and the halfway point of the 2019 All-Wheel Drive Club Brick Park Ravenel Safari Championship. The stunning Somerset scenery was in rather damp fashion as it greeted the teams ahead of the event, needing one or two of them to need assistance even before the competition got going. Once safely set up in the paddock, the teams were able to enjoy a bite to eat and head out to recce the course that plays host to this all-important fourth round. At the season opener at Walters Arena, it was Stephen Hyatt who came out on top, taking a dominant victory that kick-starved his championship campaign. Stephen was in dominant form on the high-speed route, setting the fastest time on almost every run to win by over a minute and a half. Contrastingly, early season favourites Rod Parker and Mark Hone struggled to a 6th and 10th place finish respectively, leaving them with work to do. They began that fight back in fine fashion at the second round of the championship from Emma Vale, where Hone's and Parker recorded a 1-2 finish. It was Hone that came out on top though, taking his own 90 plus second win to score some valuable class and overall championship points. This time around, it was Hyatt's turn to struggle, down in a lowly 8th place by the end, and only 4th in Class 9. Throughout the second part of the event, all eyes were on Ron Parker, as he did everything he could to reel in the leading hones. In the end, he would fall short, but 2nd place scored him some valuable championship points, and we thoroughly enjoyed watching him try to set the fastest times. Round three, we move to Glenusk, where once again Hones and Parker did battle for position. This time, second position as Adrian Marfell made a winning return and they missed round two. It was Hones that finished second in the end, with Parker dropping to fourth, losing some valuable championship points. All of that means that the pair are tied at the top of the points table arriving here at Minehead, with Chris coming third. Jason Rollins is absent, whilst Bruce Mallett is your class nine leader. Harry Nicholl, Di Paul Hansen, and Paul Rollins are also class leaders. So as we enter the midpoint of the season, Mark Holmes is joint top of the table with Rob Parker. Um, congratulations on the win at Glanusk. It was a fantastic event, um, very close between you and Rod at some points. Uh, but your car is more of a race car, isn't it? It's, it's low centre of gravity. Uh, it's perfectly poised and balanced. Um, here it's a bit tricky, isn't it? You walk around the course. Um, it's about consistency here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. First of all, I'd just like to thank all the sponsors which helped the event run and all the marshals, timekeepers and also all the people that are out the course. It's a good course, it is one. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, what, what's your mindset going into the first run? Go as fast as a dare. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to have the edge here at, uh, in Minehead? Um, your car's much more suited to the fast stuff. Um, the, the stuff. Here we've got plenty of fields and then it's in tight with the trees. Those trees you've got to keep an eye on. Yeah, it's a good contrast of everything here. Yeah. There'd be bits here for all the type of cars here, and little buggies would be really good here through the trees, the twisty bits here. If we come out the woods all in one piece, it would be all right. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. Well, it was a storming start for Holmes, setting the second fastest time outright in the first run, 27 seconds quicker than Ron Parker could manage. With that early advantage, he'll be looking to escape up the road and take some more valuable points out of his big rival. So it's early Sunday morning, um, the event's about to start. Rod Parker joined top of the table with Mark Horns. Um, we've just spoken to him, he said he's going to go hell for leather. Um, you're more conserved than that, uh, you want to be there or thereabouts, you need to be in touching distance of the championship. You said a moment earlier ago that this isn't quite suited to your car. Uh, what's the game plan? Well, as you said, the game plan is to bring it home in one piece, to bring it home competitively, but not push any, force any errors. Plenty of trees out there, um, anything can happen, uh, there's been a lot of rain recently, very slippy. Um, the course is going to evolve throughout the day, um, so you've got to be focused all the way. 
totally focused all day. You know, we've got slippery grass, we've got very slippery mud out there, and as you said, any offs put you straight into a tree. Thankfully, Rod managed to avoid hitting any trees and set the fastest time in run two to move to within 11 seconds of the lead. Mike Bakewell leads the Class 9 charge after the early stages with a comfortable class lead after two runs. Mike finds himself in third place overall and already 50 seconds clear of anybody else, meaning it could be a fairly trouble-free run to a podium and maybe a class victory this weekend. Bakewell arrives here, the championship leader in Class 9, but by just three points over Bruce Mallet. So this has been the perfect start to his event. Bruce Mallet, on the other hand, may be a little disappointed to find himself so far adrift already. Bruce managed to beat Mike Bakewell in Class 9 for the first time all season last time out, but here at Minehead, the pace simply isn't there may struggle to hang on to a top five overall by the end of the event. The man applying the immediate pressure is Class 5 leader Chris Cummings, who also arrives here in the overall championship contention, just 10 points off the top after the first three rounds. So currently leading Class 5 and also third in the championship is Chris Cummings in his Polaris uh, RZR XP Turbo. It's a two-cylinder snowmobile engine with a turbocharger, constant velocity drive, which means it's got a rubber band. Relatively um, efficient in terms of cost, uh, and it's a great machine, and you're currently running third in the championship, so uh, what can we expect here? Um, yeah, well, try, keep going for a finish again, um, try and put some quick laps in earlier on, hopefully. Um, we were hoping the course would um, suit us quite well up here, um, but after walking it, there is some very, very long, fast straights, which we might lose out on a bit. Um, just got to try and make it up in the technical bits through the trees, basically. Uh, well, uh, good luck. Hopefully, uh, we'll see you at the uh, top of Class 5 this weekend and uh, potentially still uh, in the fight for the championship. Fingers crossed. Yep, we'll try our best and uh, go from there. Good luck. The Team Parry machine is running well here too in the early stages, sixth place overall and only nine seconds behind Chris Cumming, having set the exact same time as the Class 5 machine in the opening run of the day. The crew clearly enjoying the very high speed route here at Minehead. Tim Philpot, meanwhile, is making his first appearance of the season. The car usually driven by Jasmine Philpot, and he is immediately on the pace. Fourth place in class and only 12 seconds behind Team Perry in the fight for third place in class eight. More to the point, if he continues this rate of improvement, an overall top five could be possible. Not bad for his return to the championship. This is another car that excels at the more high-speed sections of the course. The Minehead route is definitely a layout that has a bit of everything. Through the technical sections, Tim is having to take it very easy and therefore losing time. Whilst Chris Cumming already enjoys a healthy Class 5 advantage, Stuart Williams is still on for a decent second-place finish at the moment. If he can hang on to that to the flag, it would equal his season best, having finished P2 last time out as well. With Class 5 entrance once again a little thin on the ground this weekend though, an outright top 10 is no doubt Stewart's main priority. And with a car that is reasonably well suited to both the high speed and technical sections of this minehead course, he could be set to move further up the order as the event goes on. Jason and Harry Nickel are once again sharing the driving duties of the number 10 machine. So far, things are going well for them. They're leading Class 7 and are placed in ninth position overall after the first two runs. Consistency is always key with these two driver pairings though, and they'll be keen to keep this pace throughout the day to increase their chances of an overall top 10. They've been pushing hard though, and at times, perhaps, have been driving a bit too flamboyantly. Less risk taking may be necessary throughout the rest of the day.
Class 6, meanwhile, things are exceptionally tight, with just five seconds separating the top two after two runs. It's Scott Benwell who's come out on top in the early stages, but he's under a lot of pressure to hang on to the class lead. His first run was very competitive, but he lost time on run two, and we'll be hoping that that doesn't become a trend through the rest of the day. He is definitely a driver struggling in the slippery conditions though, and having to muscle the car through some of the tighter sections may be costing him time. With the course conditions only set to deteriorate as the day goes on, that will not fill him with confidence. Back to the leaders now, and with Rob Parker and Mark Hones looking set to contest the outright victory here this weekend, this could prove to be a pivotal moment in the championship battle. Let's compare their pace now through the first part of the run, with Parker at the top of the screen and Holmes down below. Remember though, it's Holmes who has the early advantage, 11 seconds clear after the first two runs. Well, through this first sequence of corners, there is nothing to choose between the two of them. They pass these marker posts almost at the same time. Then though, the course opens up. This, in theory, should suit Parker better. He struggles through some of the more technical sections. Deep by the end of that straight, he's a second up on Hones, and as they turn through the next right-hander, Hones makes a mistake. An overcorrection sends him out wide, wipes out a marker post, and to make matters worse, the course opens up onto one of its fastest sections. A long, flat-out section with a big jump at the end, definitely Ron Parker territory. As he jumps over the top of the crest, he is now two seconds clear, and looking to further extend the margin. It's going to be a fascinating battle. Join us after the break to see what happens next. Welcome back to Minehead and the fourth round of the All-Wheel Drive Club Brit Park Ravenel Safari Championship. Before we check in with some of our class leaders, let's keep you up to date with a few of those who have fallen by the wayside already. Class 7 gained a couple of new entrants this weekend, but one of them, Carl Box, was sadly forced into retirement on run 3. He pulled over to the side of the road with mechanical issues and was out for the day. Also out of contention early on is Adrian Beer, who only managed to get through the first run of the day. Meanwhile, in Class 1, it's Richard Mayer Barron who's on top in the early stages. He caught up with Anthony. Class battles are hotting up in the championship as we get to the midpoint of the season, and yeah. Class 1 is no different. Absolutely. Richard, you've had a DNF already this year, so that's your drop score. Um, James Tennant, who's currently leading Class 1, and also the Freelander Trophy, yeah. is clerking the course this weekend, which means he scores 95 points automatically, so the pressure is really on you. Absolutely. We've got to bring it home. We've got to look after the car now. We've got to use this course to our advantage and we've got to get a finish not only for class points but overall points as well james yes like you said he's got 95 points in the championship but he also gets 97 points in the um class championship points as well so it really is on me and it is down to me i'm the one that has to look at what's going on now and, and see how we get on but we've got to bring it home you have and it's a, it's going to be a difficult thing here at minehead um it's a very wet course at the moment slippy there's mud everywhere um how are you going to approach this one? We always take it easy here because we know we've been we've had a couple of nasties here. Um, as you know, we've we've changed over from the um, carburetted system to the uh, injection system, which hopefully will help us, especially on the long, windy, bumpy bits where we were losing fuel. Uh, we had fuel loss for all the last events. Uh, now we've got more power, so the long straight to start is where we've got to try and get 15 to 20 seconds on our competitors over a mile. That's where I've got to power it and just hold in, hold it in there and get to the top and then get in the woods and just drive it. It's very, very easy here to see a very long straight, but there are tree roots under there and they don't forgive. They do throw you out quite quickly. Uh, we, we're used to it. We're used to the car. Uh, people say to us, how do you get it round? We do. We love it. But this course is a nice course for us. We, we'll just take it easy and, and get on to the job. And like I say, we have to not focus on the championship at the minute but we just need to focus on bringing it home and, and that's what it is we've got to get it back here at the end of tomorrow back on the trailer and hopefully in one piece and earn ourselves some points incorporated within class one is the always competitive freeland trophy and it's just as close as ever in the early stages here today 
we approach the halfway mark of the event, it's Mike Arthur who finds himself at the top of the Freelander tree by just less than a minute over his nearest rivals. Mike has yet to win the class this year and will be hoping to break that duck here at Minehead. Hoping to stop him in his tracks though will be Ian Willem, who is twice a runner-up in the class in 2019. He caught up with Anthony in the paddock. So the man chasing down Philippa and James Tennant in the Freelander Trophy is Ian Gwillem. Now, um, Philippa and James are Clark in the course, so they also must get 97 points. But if you win uh, the class, then you claw back some points. Uh, do, yeah. So it's an important round for you. It certainly is, yes. Yeah, It's uh, something I need to just keep the car going, get to the end, and hopefully that'll be enough to catch them up a little bit. It's, it's a great vehicle. It's Ian Mawson's old car. He used to race in the Freelance Challenge with the, that round with the British Cross Country Championship. Plenty of pedigree in the car. Um, there's no reason why you can't win this class this weekend with the Howard V6. No, that's right. That's right. Like I say, I've just got to keep it in the tracks, make sure I don't meet any trees, which is what mine head is all about. There's a lot of trees out there that uh, want to stop you from racing. Yeah, I've heard rumours that they move now and again. They, they certainly do. <laughs> I've experienced that once before in my time here, yes. yeah. You're going along nicely and all of a sudden she jumps out in front of you. By the time you've stopped, it's gone back into the edge, so it's not very nice out there. What are conditions uh, like out there? It's a bit, a bit greasy at the moment. Because it's in trees in the woods, there's no um, and sunlight doesn't get to dry the track off. And unfortunately, I think we're going out first today, so we're going to have the slickest, trickiest conditions, really. So. And you've got Richard uh, May Barron in Class One. You're also running in Class One, uh, the Freelanders Trophy, and uh, runs in Class One as well. Um, so you've got Richard uh, May Barron uh, homing down on you as well this weekend. He's running just behind you in Class One. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's uh, these Freelanders are not. They're great little tools to drive with, but he seems to have a little better. The suspension and all on his is is better than ours, so he tends to ride the rough stuff a bit better, which makes him a little bit quicker. So, yeah, that's where the ground clearance comes into play, isn't it? Over the over the rough stuff, yeah, 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 you can yeah. carry a bit more speed. Yeah, well, I've got to carry a big sump guard instead. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're going to get to the end, and hopefully uh, we'll see a top spot of uh, the Freelander Trophy and maybe Class One as well. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a good result if I can get that. Yes, but a finish is what I'm looking for first. So. Good luck. Thank you very much. Luke Dodds and Kieran Jones, meanwhile, look set to have their most disappointing event of the year so far, despite a relatively promising start. The pair have been wonderfully consistent all year, having never been off the podium, third place in all three of the first rounds in 2019. That unbroken run of podiums, though, looks set to end here this weekend. After a solid first couple of runs, their third run was way off the pace and has seen them drop several minutes behind the Class 1 podium contenders. The rugged terrain is always a challenge for these near-production-based Class 1 machines, here on this wide open section of course that many of the higher class cars are able to take flat out, you can see the suspension at work and perhaps understand why the class one runners have to take things a little more easily. Simon Crow, meanwhile, became the only Class 1 non-finisher this weekend, and it was a frustrating end to his day. He had been setting the fastest time so far, and was comfortably leading Class 1, and visibly the most committed over some of the bumpier sections. In the end, though, perhaps it was that commitment that was his undoing, and mechanical gremlin would put him out midway through. Unceremonious end for a potential class winner.
at the top of the tyres. Meanwhile, Rod Parker has been on an absolute mission. He set the outright fastest times on runs two, three and four to overhaul Mark Holmes and move into the event lead. This is turning out to be a sensational battle, though he's still only 20 seconds clear, and Holmes will no doubt be looking to regroup at the midway break and push on again this afternoon to close the gap. It's been a full commitment drive, though, from Rob Parker. Let's ride on board and enjoy his run through one of the fastest sections of the course. Don't be fooled into thinking that Hones has been taking things easy though. It's still been maximum attack for the mini driver, it just hasn't been enough to hang on to the event lead. The main damage was done on run four where he was over 15 seconds slower than Rod Parker in what was the biggest single loss of time so far in the event. He'll be determined to fight back though, these points are vital with the pair of them tied for the championship lead arriving here at the event that marks the halfway point in the season. Hones knows that he needs to retaliate if at all possible. As we ride on board with the Mini through this high speed section, you'll be able to see that whilst he is still fully committed, the speed is not quite as high as Rod was. That's where the time is starting to slip away, and maybe a few more brave pills will be required for Holmes this afternoon. In Class 6, meanwhile, it is even closer, with just two seconds now separating the top two in Class. It's still Scott Benwell on top, but he's being put under all sorts of pressure for that class lead and will need to maintain his commitment and concentration throughout the afternoon. The man applying all of that pressure at the moment is Daryl Hardy, looking for his first class victory of the year. Daryl has finished second in class in both of the events he's contested so far in 2019 and is determined to take that first victory here today. He has two fastest times to his credit, but so too does Benwell. It could barely be closer. This looks set to be a battle that will run right to the end of the day. Third place in class six, meanwhile, is Andy John, but only just. His times haven't been quite able to match the top two, and he's unlikely to catch them now unless he either has issues. Instead, he has to keep an eye to his mirror as he tries to hold on to an 11 second advantage in third place. The crew applying all of that pressure is the pairing of Leighton Dodds and Martin Hayward. They've been faster than Andy John on two of the four runs so far, but the ones in which they've been slower, they've lost quite a lot of time meaning they've got this 11 second deficit to catch. 11 seconds is definitely doable though, with four runs still to go. Class six right now, attracting most of the attention, even though it's for midfield positions outright. Roger Baker, meanwhile, has a slightly calmer afternoon ahead of him, fifth place in class six at the moment. Since he is several minutes behind the top four and a couple of minutes ahead of sixth place Derek Wheeler, that is unlikely to change. His chances of catching the cars in front not helped by this moment whilst encountering a bit of slower traffic out on the course. Derek is the championship leader in Class 6 by 94 points, so can afford an off weekend. He'll be hoping this is his only one this season. Welcome back to the all-wheel drive club Brit Park Ravenel Safari Championship where the Minehead Coursed has claimed another victim and a spectacular one at that. 
Andy Kent and James Withers made an innocuous looking mistake, which led to a spectacular roll. The car was recovered and their day was done. Carl Box, meanwhile, was an early retirement, this time from Class 7. Whilst very quick, the Minehead course is also very bumpy and must be treated with respect. Sadly, Carl came a cropper across some of the bumps, damaging the front left corner, leading to a rather spectacular end to his event. to our class leaders now, and in class four, it's a dominant performance once again from Paul Hansen. Hansen has only dropped a solitary point all year, with two class victories and a second place at Evervale. With only one other class four car entered this weekend, it looks set to be a fairly easy cruise to class victory once again to extend his points lead. Dai always pushes hard though and is fighting for a top 10 finish in the overall championship. Arriving here at Minehead, he is ninth in the points, only a solitary point ahead of Paul Rollins, so there's still plenty to play for. That means he's pushing hard, perhaps a bit too hard. high-speed spin, but well recovered from without losing too much time, the class victory should still go his way. Tony Rooney is the other class 4 entrant this weekend, and he's had an altogether calmer time of things. Tony may be some way off the outright class pace, but is still enjoying himself as he gets to grips with the slippery conditions. If he can bring it home, a second place will be his best class finish of the year so far, but he, like everyone else here, would love a little more competition in class four in the future. He still has plenty to contend with though, as we move into the afternoon the weather starts to change, rain comes down and the course becomes even more slippery. Back to the sharp end now though and Chris Cumming who is still a comfortable class 5 leader. Whilst his class position with two runs to go is strong, he may be a little disappointed that he's only fourth place outright at the moment. Despite his very best efforts, he hasn't had the pace of Rod Parker and Mark Hones, and in fact looks set to lose out on an outright podium, meaning he'll lose ground to the two of them in the championship race. However, with his nearest Class 5 rival, Jason Rollins, not here this weekend, it's still been a positive day all round. Second place in Class 5 at the moment is Stuart Williams, although he's lost some ground since this morning. Stuart had been setting a remarkably consistent pace until run 6, where he dropped over 30 seconds, putting him out of contention for the Class victory took his season best finish of 8th place overall last time out at Glenusk though and is looking to try and match that again here today. With two runs to go, he's in 10th position and a big push this afternoon could see him move up a couple of spots. Meanwhile, Joanne Pullins is on the verge of taking her first podium finish of the year so far. In her first full season of competitive safari competition driving, she has already impressed, and 
and if she can keep it on the island for the remaining two runs, she could come home a popular podium finisher. The car is also new for this year, so if she gets to grips with it and gains an experience, we may yet see her challenging for class honours before the end of the year. Andy Dare's season to forget has, unfortunately, not improved here at Minehead. Despite having some really impressive pace in the early running, two slow runs mean that he is languishing down in fourth with little chance of improvement. Andy's times in the morning would have been more than enough to put him in contention for the class victory, what would have been a much needed confidence boost after a disappointing start to the season so far. Sadly, Lady Luck was once again not on his side though, but let's enjoy his run through the high speed ends of the stage, on one of the rare occasions the car was working well. What of the fight for the overall victory though? Well, it's still between Rod Parker and Mark Holmes, but it's Parker who has been extending the margin through the middle part of the day. 17 seconds faster than Holmes in run four, and 18 seconds quicker on the fifth run means that he is starting to escape into the distance. Holmes retaliated on run six, but was only a second quicker than Parker, and will need more through the final two runs to claw back enough time to legitimately challenge for the victory. On this high-speed, narrow section, yet again, there is nothing to choose between the two of them. It's been so close all day, and only 11 one-thousandths of a second separate them at that point of the run. Holmes will need more than that if he's going to usurp Parker from the lead, but both of them really could do with this victory. Whilst Parker and Holmes debate the overall and Class 8 honours, for third place in Class 8, it's been a rather calmer run for Tim Philpot. Tim is running eighth place overall as well, in what has been a really positive return to the championship. He's been particularly spectacular through the high-speed sections as well. Full commitment driving, always a plus for the fans' stage side. Team Parry had been contesting that third place in Class 8 early on, but their afternoon pace has not been able to replicate their form from this morning, and they've dropped down the order. Out of contention now for a class podium, and down to 15th place in the overall rankings. Mike Bakewell is running third place overall at the moment, and a comfortable Class 9 leader. Whilst he may not have been able to match the pace of the overall top two, another podium finish is now beckoning for Bakewell, and a Class 9 victory. Whilst Mike is having to be fairly tentative through some of the tighter sections of the course, on the wide open parts he can really open taps and enjoy the high speed and well balanced nature of this machine. Bruce Mallet arrived here just three points behind the class nine points leader Mike Bakewell but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to take any points out of him here this weekend. He's running second place in Class 9 at the moment, and whilst that is a fairly secure second position, it means he will lose a point to Bakewell, and he can little afford to lose. Oh 
Andy Skelly had a disappointing start to the morning, but since then his pace has been strong. However, that and moments like this have put him out of contention for a top two finish in the class. Andy won the previous round of the championship as well in class nine, so this will be a bump back to earth. He'll be keen to bounce back from next time. It's still been remarkably spectacular to see him out on the high speed parts of the course, thrilling the spectator stage side. In class one, it's looking more and more certain that Richard Mayer Barron is going to take another class victory. He's pulled several minutes clear now of everybody else within the class and looks likely to take his third class win on the bounce. Mike Arthur is the man chasing Richard down for the Class 1 honours and leading the Freelander Trophy, which is very much his target this weekend. Ian Gwillem, meanwhile, is his nearest Freelander opposition, but already several minutes back, third place in Class 1. To explain exactly where Richard Mayer Barron is gaining his time, let's use the split screen to compare his speed through the opening part of the run to that of Ian Gwillem, third in Class 1. Off the line, there's not a huge amount to choose between them, but despite the much older machine that Richard is pedalling, it's better over the bumps. Slightly higher ride height means that he can carry more speed through some of the rougher sections of the course. On the bottom of the screen, you can see just how much more easily Ian Gwillem is having to take it, by the time they come through this tight left-hander where we have our split times, Richard is already seven seconds ahead. Over four seconds gained in just the first few hundred metres of the course. And welcome back to Minehead and the fourth round of the all-wheel drive for the Brit Park Ravenol Safari Championship. Andy Dare, unfortunately, has joined the list of retirements here this weekend. A list that only comprises of six entrants, though. Mightily impressive, given just how demanding this course is. Thankfully not on that list of retirements, though, is Rod Parker, who continues to lead the way with two runs still to go. In that penultimate run, though, he is not as quick as Mark Hones. Hones takes five seconds out of him. The gap is creeping down now, just over 30, as we go into the final run of the day. So halfway through the event at a minute, and Mark Hones is currently second place behind Rod Parker. Um, he's got the legs on you this weekend, but the rain's just come down, and you've put in your fastest lap of the weekend. Yeah, I don't know how you managed that. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah, enjoyed that. You know, what's it like going through the the forest? Obviously, we've got a wide uh, section of fields, but it's very, very slippy in there, isn't it? It is, yeah. It wasn't quite as slippy as I thought it'd be on that last run with the rain, but it's great. You come out of the naturally little tricky bits, and then the track's just there, and it just encourages you to put your foot down and enjoy <laughs> them. <laughs> and obviously, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And how scary is it? There's some really steep drops, yeah. um, which go on for quite a while. What's it like negotiating that? Uh, just cover your foot on the brake, and let the car take you down there. And so the, 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 at the bottom it gets really rough where you're braking. Loads of clattering and banging going on and rocks flying everywhere. And then uh, come out of that and put your foot down and crack on. Yeah. And uh, you, you found a bit more pace now, so hopefully you can pull back a bit of time and potentially yeah. you could uh, jump rod for the, uh, for the win. We'll be doing our best. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. In a somewhat distant third position is Mike Bakewell. With one more run to go though, he's several minutes behind the leading two and also has a couple of minutes cushion over fourth place. Therefore, the Class 9 victory looks like going his way for the first time this year, and he will extend what was a very slender three-point advantage arriving here at Minehead. Also on course for a Class victory, his second Class 5 win of the year is Chris Cumming. Whilst he will no doubt be a little disappointed to miss out on the outright podium, it's still been a solid weekend for Polaris, despite the fact that it is significantly down on power on some of the faster sections of the course.
Class 7 honours appear to be going to Jason and Harry Nicholl. Their primary objective over the final two runs of the day is to hang on to their fifth position overall. After a slightly off pace run seven, they're now only 11 seconds clear of Scott Benwell and will have to push hard to maintain that top five position to the end. However, if they can get to the end in one piece, they will take their third class victory of the year, which will equal the record set by Philippa and James Tennant in the Freedom Trophy. Speaking of Scott Benwell, he will no doubt be on a big push over these final two runs to try and break into that top five. However, with his big Class 6 title rival Derek Wheeler at the bottom of the timesheets this weekend, he won't want to push too hard and risk giving away what is, at the moment, a comfortable Class 6 victory. Should Benwell stumble, Tim Philpott will be hoping that he is close enough to take advantage. He's less than a minute behind Benwell going into the final run and looking good for a third place on his return to Class 8. Daryl Hardy has become Scott Benwell's nearest Class 6 rival, albeit he's over two and a half minutes behind going into the final run of the day. It's been a good run this for Daryl though, and if he brings it home, it will be his third second place finish from three attempts so far this year. And with Derek Wheeler's misfortunes, like Benwell, he could yet move into title contention. Dipol Hansen's spectacular day looks set to bag him a class four victory and a ninth place finish overall. He may have had a relatively uncontested run to Class 4 honours this weekend, but that hasn't stopped him putting on a show, still pushing just as hard at the end of the day as he was at the start of it. Stuart Williams, though, is less than a minute behind Dai going into the final run, albeit the two are running in different classes. Still well worth pushing on, though. If Hansen has any issues, Williams could be the big beneficiary and move into ninth place overall. Andy Skelly, meanwhile, was the Class 9 winner last time out at Glenusk, but looks set to have to settle for second place here today. A third consecutive third place finish within Class 6 beckons for Leighton Dodds and Martin Hayward by virtue of an ultra consistent performance today. Excluding a cautious opening run of the day, each one of the subsequent seven attempts have been within a handful of seconds of each other. They may not be the quickest car out there, but consistency is key on an event like this. Andy John has done his best to stay with the two and challenge for third place, but hasn't had the consistency to match them. And by the end of the event, has dropped to over three minutes adrift of the pair. Joanne Pullins now looks set to take her first Class 5 podium of the season after a solid run to third place. She's seen her times improve steadily as the day has gone on, and with that first podium now in the bag, how long before she's on the top step of it? The Team Parry car, though, is breathing down Joanne's neck. They may not be running in the same class, but they'll be looking to try and get one more position in the outright rankings if they can. This mistake, though, very nearly meeting with a tree through a tight right-hander, has probably cost them any chance of gaining that one extra position. Richard Mayer Barron looks like another driver heading for his third class victory of the year. Perhaps most impressively, it's three wins on the bounce, as he now moves into dominant form heading into the middle part of the year. He may have arrived here fourth place in the points, but with Class 1 as tightly bunched as it is, this victory is no doubt going to move him right towards the top of the points sheets. It's been a dominant victory as well, taking the Class win by over three and a half minutes. The 
fight for second place in Class 1 and the Freelander Trophy victory looks like going the way of Mike Arthur as Ian Willem's charge has fallen short. He's extended his lead steadily as the event has gone on and with Philippa and James Tennant not competing this weekend, he's set to take a few points out of them for the championship. They will of course still score 75 points because of their official role here today, but the gap is coming down. For Ian Gwillem, though, the gap to Mike Arthur wasn't going down. In fact, it was extending as the afternoon went on. Second place in the Freelander Trophy for the third time will be a little frustrating for Ian, no doubt. He must be wondering when he will get to step on the top step of that podium. Still, he will take some points out of Philippa and James. The gap will now be less than 30 heading into the second half of the season. <laughs> into the final run of the event then, and the battle for the event victory coming down to the wire. Just 32 seconds separate Ron Parker and Mark Holmes. Another opportunity with a split screen here to see just how evenly matched the pair of them are. Well, Mark has thrown everything at his pursuit of Ron Parker. Ron has been a little concerned at the time being taken out of him in the recent runs, but with an over 30 second advantage going into this final run of the day, Parker just needs to keep things clean should be on track for his first victory of the year. Virtually nothing in it at the first split as they head down a particularly bumpy, narrow and high-speed section of the course. You can see here just how unforgiving this minehead route is. Now though, the gap is over a second in the favour of Rod Parker. Bit of a mistake there for Hodes, gets up over the bank, that'll cost him another few tenths as well, and it doesn't look as though he's going to be able to do enough to beat Ron Park and the gap at the next split has gone up fractionally to 1.16 seconds. Let's ride on board and enjoy the final few moments of competitive running for these two. Well, as suspected, Hones wasn't quite able to do enough to beat Rod Parker, who takes his first win of the year. Mike Bakewell is third and wins in Class 9, ahead of Chris Cumming, and then Jason and Harry Nickel, Class 5, and seven victors outright. Scott Benwell lost ground at the end, but still took the victory in Class 6. In the points then, Rod Parker moves ahead of Mark Hones by a solitary point going into the second half of the season. Chris Cumming goes third with Mike Bakewell, ahead of Harry and Jason Nickel, fourth and fifth. So after a gruelling event, the winner, first time ever, is Rod Parker. Rod, what a performance. Thank you. Talk us through it. It's, uh, you look exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it's been a hard day today. You know, as I said, we'd go out for the first lap and take it easy. Um, I gave Mark quite a bit of time on the first lap. So we knew we had to pick the pace up and, uh, and keep that pace all the way through the day. So even though it was a wet, it was a wet day today, uh, the tracks held us in and we just kept the power on. Yeah, no, it suited your car down to the ground, but the consistency has been the key here. You've not looked at the times, you just focus on what you've got to do, and in the end, it works. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. More to come? Hopefully. See you in the next round. Yeah, absolutely. And it also uh, puts you in the lead of the championship. Yes, for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't wait to see how this uh, season unfolds. Uh, for now, go and enjoy the win. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I will do.